story time about my touchy English teacher. And no, he did not get fired. He still works at that same school till this day. Let's get into it. This happened when I was a senior in high school, literally last year. His class was the new English class that I switched to because my other English teacher wasn't teaching me shit. So I went to the office and asked if I could switch my classes and they said yes. But only if I was willing to drop honors English and do regular English. And I also would have to be in a freshman class. I was honestly willing to do whatever to get out the class. So I was like, sure. And now I honestly wish I didn't because of this. So it first started off with him being super, super nice to me, which is kind of weird because I never really talked to him before. He made me like a class leader just because I was older. And every single time I walked into his class, Classroom, he would try to talk to me like not even about school literally about anything I didn't think that was weird I was guessing he talked to me so much because I was older and we could relate on more stuff this is when things started taking a turn for the worse during tests or quizzes he would walk around the classroom and he would always make his way back to me just so he could rub my shoulders or he would run his fingers through my hair that was the biggest red flag then he asked me to stay after school for extra credit like for part two part two of my touchy English teacher the things I would like to add from the last video I never had him as a teacher before not even freshman year I moved to that school when I was a sophomore they told me that he was known to be creepy and that so many girls have complained about him making them uncomfortable but they were just rumors so i didn't think that much of it till that man started rubbing my shoulders in class and it's the fact that he rubbed my shoulders and nobody else's I was not 18 i was still 17 years old i just started senior year back to the story so he asked me to stay after school for extra credit he said he wanted me to help him set up a project for his students and he doesn't know what young kids like and apparently every freshman in his class had something to do after school so i had to do it but since he said he would give me extra credit credit I was like okay sure and I definitely didn't think that this would happen so my last class was forensic so after school I went to his classroom he didn't have any supplies out or anything so I was like what project he tells me to reach on top of a shelf behind his desk he was literally sitting at his desk he could have done it himself so I was like okay but as soon as I reach up on that shelf he gets up and grabs my ass like for part three because it only gets worse from here this is part three of my touchy English teacher so like I said he asked me to get something off of the shelf behind his desk while he was sitting at his desk and as soon as I go up to grab it he grabs my ass he literally stood up to grab it and then I spun around and started looking at him crazy well after he grabbed my butt he kept walking as if his arm just brushed up against my ass and he looked back at me and he was like is everything okay like, okay so we're just gonna act like he didn't just do what he just did but I just looked at him and I was like everything's okay I told him that I had just gotten a text from my mom and an emergency happened so I had to go home but instead of going home I went to a friend's house and it was the same friend who told me all the rumors of that teacher being a creep I went to a friend's house instead of going straight home because I was crying really hard and I didn't want my parents to be concerned and I wasn't sure if I wanted to tell them what happened or not. I was only crying because I felt super uncomfortable and I didn't know what else to do. When I got to my friend's house, she told me that she would go to the office with me at school the next day. So the next day came and we went to the office. Well, this is what they said when we told them what happened, like for part four. This is part four of my touchy English teacher. Okay, so my friend and me went to the office to tell the principal what happened. And he was acting really concerned and everything until I told him which teacher it was. Then he was like, oh yeah we get complaints about him all the time and i was like so are you going to do something about it why haven't you done something about it already and he goes well a lot of students will make up things about a teacher they don't like just so they can get them in trouble but i'm not saying you're making it up of course we're gonna have to look into it well i told him that i wasn't comfortable in that class anymore and i wanted to go back to my honors english class and he let me switch back well, after like five months i still never heard anything from my principal and i didn't know what better to do but move on with my life I still saw him in the hallway sometimes and it was just really really awkward and he would smile at me as if what happened didn't happen they basically just let him get away with it because multiple girls have complained about him before but they didn't have any proof against him since there was no proof they didn't do anything but i feel like if it was multiple girls something should have been done but that's just me story time about why my lunch lady always hated me in high school I never thought this would happen to me this story takes the biggest turn at the end okay so it first started off as just my lunch lady eyeing me weird whenever i would enter the cafeteria or whenever i would pay for my food she would always 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 give me the weirdest look and then sometimes she wouldn't even let me get lunch she would say oh you don't have enough money on your account and i knew the day before i just put money in so then i wouldn't be able to eat lunch i reported her a couple times mind you my mom works at the school i even told my mom about it she would just lie and be like i never said she couldn't get her food mom told me that if she ever refused to let me get food again to just come up to her classroom and then she'll give me something to eat but i was so confused because my mom works at the school and i expected her to talk to administration about how the lunch lady is treating her daughter but she didn't say anything to administration until one day this time i actually didn't have any money in my account and i did not know went to go get my lunch as usual and when i go to check out my food the lunch lady throws her hands up knocks my plate out of my hand 
she says I'm just like my mom because we're both greedy. Like for part two. This is part two of why my lunch lady always hated me in high school. So like I said, this time I actually didn't have any money and I went to check out my food for lunch. The lunch lady knocks my plate over and says I'm just like my mom since we're both greedy. And I had no idea what she meant. Said she meant to throw her hands up she didn't mean to knock over my plate everyone was looking at us and it was so awkward so i just walked away and i didn't even sit down for lunch i just walked out of the cafeteria and went straight to my mom's classroom i had no idea what the lunch lady was talking about my mom doesn't even talk to her or at least i thought she didn't so like i said i was on the way to my mom's classroom after the lunch lady yelled at me in front of the whole entire cafeteria and once i got to my mom's classroom i told her exactly what happened she was in the middle of class when i tell you my mom stormed out of her class went straight to the cafeteria pulled up on the lunch lunch lady in front of everybody and she grabs her by her hair the lunch lady tried to grab to the cash register the cash register fell and money went everywhere all you could hear was the coins dropping on the floor like ka-ching ka-ching ka -ching. so close to jumping in but my mom had her other teachers had to come into the cafeteria to break them up and got a time to like for part three okay so this is part three of why my lunch lady always hated me in high school like i said my mom dragged the lunch lady in front of everyone in the cafeteria some teachers came and pulled them apart they immediately fired my mom obviously my mom said forget this forget y'all and she took me and we both went home well on the way home she told me the beef with the lunch lady so apparently the lunch lady had been flirting with the history teacher and my mom and the history teacher were seeing each other on the low my mom was married so i was like so what about dad she said that my dad just didn't make her happy anymore but the problem with the lunch lady was the fact that all the teachers at my school are messy as fuck they all talk shit about each other they're always talking about another teacher and so basically all the staff knew just because of rumors and gossip that my mom and the history teacher were kind of seeing each other everyone knew including the lunch lady so once the lunch lady started flirting with the history teacher too they low-key started having tension with each other but it was unnecessary for the lunch lady to take out her anger on me so that's why she whooped her ass by the way this happened when i was in high school i have now graduated out of college and my parents are divorced now so this is a story time of why i dropped out of high school on my first day and when i say my first day i mean my first day of freshman year after this i never went back so like i said it was the first day of freshman year and i have extreme anxiety my anxiety is literally so so bad i literally get anxiety just by waking up in the morning so i was super anxious for my first day of high school i literally was running around the school i could not find my classes i walked into the wrong classroom several times it was so embarrassing but then i finally made it to my first class i sat down in the front of the classroom bad idea after running around the school and not being able to find my classes and walking into different classes that i wasn't supposed to be in which was so embarrassing my stomach was literally in my ass my stomach was literally bubbling because of my anxiety i felt so much pressure in my stomach i needed to let some out and you know i thought i could get away with it you know a little silent fart you know it was silent but it was not a fart i shit my pants then the teacher says we're gonna go around the classroom and everyone has to stand up and say one thing about ourselves starting with me since i was sitting at the front now this is what happened like for part two this is part two of why i dropped out of high school my first day of freshman year so like i said i just shit myself in class the teacher says we have to go around the room and everyone has to stand up and say something about themselves and of course i had to be sitting in the front of the classroom and i had to go first so i just told her i didn't feel comfortable standing up and i'd rather sit down but she said that i had to stand up and everybody has to stand up so i clearly did not have many options and i decided that i was gonna stand up and so i stood up and everybody gasped even the teacher the teacher literally made everybody get out of the classroom and i knew from there on out i could not show my face in that school anymore i knew all day everyone was going to talk about that one kid that shit themselves in class yeah the teacher took everyone out of the class and then i got myself cleaned up went to the office told them what happened they called my mom they let me go home i cried to my mom and told her i could not show my face at that school anymore and so she pulled me out of high school and i just did online until i graduated this is why they call me miss petty and this is also why you should never let your boyfriend have a girl best friend let's get right into it so my boyfriend had this girl best friend who he was friends with for like two months before he met me so yeah not a very long time over the course of those two months she had bought him five thousand dollars worth of stuff that's a little too nice for a best friend for me but my boyfriend told me to trust him and that they were just friends i should try and talk to her and shit maybe me and her could even become friends so me and her actually did hang out one day it was me her and my boyfriend and we were all drinking my boyfriend passed out a little early so it was only me and her awake I was getting really tipsy and I ended up throwing up all over myself. My boyfriend's girl best friend laid my head back on the sink and started washing my hair. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if I spoke too soon about her? What if she's actually not that bad? And she was washing my hair so nice. I felt smooth and silky. A little too smooth and silky. Well, I woke up the next morning to notice that my boyfriend's best friend is gone. And when I went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror, I was completely bald. Part two of why they call me Miss Petty. 
So like I said, when I woke up, my boyfriend's best friend wasn't there. And when I looked in the mirror, I was completely bald. So I woke up my boyfriend and he's shocked. He's like, what the fuck did you do? And I was like, what the fuck did I do? I know his best friend did this. When I texted her number, the messages weren't going through. And when I checked her socials, I was blocked on everything. I made my boyfriend DM her on Insta, but we watched her Instagram story and there were so many pictures of me bald while I was asleep. At this point, I was literally bawling my eyes out. My long, luscious hair was gone. I even called my mom. Mind you, we were all in college. So yeah, like I said, I was bawling. I was honestly ready to give up on life right then and there. I was regretting even going to college. I'm just kidding, stay in school, kids. But those tears ain't last for long, child. Mm -mm. I was gonna get my sweet revenge. So little old me made a sugar daddy page. I did some follow for follow so I could get some followers so it could look legit. And I posted some pictures of an old man I found on Facebook. And I DM'd her and asked her if she wanted to be my sugar baby. And she said yes. This is where the fun begins, like for part three. This is part three of why they call me Miss Petty. So I made a fake sugar daddy page and DM'd my boyfriend's girl best friend and asked her if she wanted to be my sugar baby. And she said yes. You want to know why she said yes? Well, 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 that $5,000 worth of stuff she bought for my boyfriend came in handy. A week had passed since she posted all those pictures of me bald while sleeping. Oh, by the way, she saw Nair in the bathroom and used that to wash my hair. Well, a week passed and over that week, I sold all the stuff she bought for my boyfriend. I actually ended up getting like 6 k back. So basically, I told her I would pay her $1,000 a week in exchange for some sexy pics. And I sent her $700 right there so she thought it wasn't fake. Bitch didn't even know she was getting her own money back. Eh. So I sent her $1,000 a week for five weeks in exchange for pictures. Well, once all the money ran out, it was time for revenge. I gathered up all the pictures that she sent me, made a fake page pretending to be her, and sent the pictures to her parents, her job, the school, and to multiple girls' boyfriends on Instagram with the text, break up with your girlfriend because I'm bored, but shh, don't tell anyone. Like for part four. This is part four of why they call me Miss Petty. So after I catfished my boyfriend's girl best friend and posted her nudes everywhere and sent them to a lot of girls' boyfriends, friend obviously she was getting so much backlash and everybody was posting about it and everybody was coming at her so many people wanted to beat her ass it was hilarious she kept trying to say no it's not me behind the fake page but nobody believed her she had to go completely ghost on social media Lit who did everybody know i was the mastermind behind the whole thing she didn't show up to school for like a week or so but then the day that she came back i'm not exactly sure why she came back but she got jumped by five girls but not only did she get jumped they threw her in the trash can i almost felt bad until i remembered how long and luscious my hair used to be let this be a reminder to everybody to just stay in your lane eventually she dropped out of that college and i'm guessing she went to some other college but everybody hated her there so she had to move damn karma really is a bitch and so is your mama story time of why i'm terrified of ever babysitting again i started babysitting for this one family in the summer of 2019 i have my information for babysitting online so people contact me so the mom contacted me and said she wanted me to babysit for her three kids so we set up a time and schedule she gave me her address you know the use so when i got to her house she had already left like five minutes before i arrived and i see the kids sitting in the living room watching tv but then i see this man walking down the steps this man who I was assuming was the dad. He asked me who I was and I said I was the babysitter and that I sorted things out with the mom if he wanted to make sure he could like call her. Well, he told me that he was the dad and that he knew I was coming. He just didn't expect me to come so early and so suddenly. I was kind of confused as why they needed a babysitter if he was already there. So I was like, okay, so he wouldn't be able to get into the house if it wasn't actually the dad. So it has to be him. Well, the mom texts me and says she's on her way home. So I put the kids to sleep and then I go home. Half an hour later, I get a text from the mom saying the kids are gone. When I described that man I saw, she said that sounded a lot like her ex-husband who has a spare key to their house. Part two of why I'm terrified of babysitting again. Like I said, when the mom came home after I left, she told me that the kids were gone. I described to her the man that I saw in the house that I thought was the dad, and she told me that was the ex-husband who had a spare key to their house. But she did not believe me right away. At first, she was asking me a lot of questions, acting as if I was the one who kidnapped them. Almost as if she was accusing me of kidnapping. And you know what? Those feelings were right. Obviously, the police had to get involved, and when I spoke to them, they told me that the mom wanted to know if I knew where the kids were. And I had already told her about the man that I saw. But they said that they would also look into the ex-husband as well. So she kind of believed me, but didn't 100%. I was literally being accused of kidnapping three kids. But they were looking more into me because her ex-husband lived in Colorado. We lived in Kansas. So I was a prime suspect up until they interviewed the dad 
Friday, he gave himself up like for part three of why I'll never babysit again. So like I said, they were finally able to interview the dad, but it took a while because he lived in a different state. But when they interviewed him, he mentioned this girlfriend that he had. It was his current girlfriend. And so they asked him where she lived and all that good stuff. Well, the police decided that they were going to question the girlfriend as well. So they went over to the girlfriend's house, they knocked on the door, and as soon as they knock on the door, the police hear a child crying. The dad didn't mention anything about his girlfriend having kids. And the next thing you know, a toddler runs up to the door. A toddler that looks exactly like one of the kids that I was babysitting. And so the police arrested the girlfriend and the police arrested the dad for kidnapping three children. Mom finally got her kids back and everything was good. The kids were not harmed in any way. This all happened in the span of like a week or two. The mom actually ended up coming to me and personally apologizing about how she acted but i told her it was no biggie because anybody would act like that in a situation where their kids were gone and i continue to babysit her kids here's another babysitting horror story and how my babysitter almost killed me and my baby sister so it first started when my parents hired a babysitter for us at first she was really sweet and then she started being really mean out of nowhere she started hitting us when we would cry and she would blow cigarette smoke in our face one time when she was driving us home from the grocery store my baby sister was crying really hard the whole entire car ride when we got home she got me out of the car and brought in the groceries but she left my two-year-old sister in the car it was 103 degrees and she left her in there that's honestly when i first started becoming scared of her but why i became terrified of her is because one time my parents went on vacation for like a week and one night my babysitter ordered pizza my parents sent the babysitter the money for it It was for all of us but she wanted to get anchovies on the pizza i told her i didn't really want that but she ordered it anyway when the pizza came i didn't really want to eat it and instead of her being like well i'll just make you something else she locked me into a room for three days she would only let me out to use the bathroom but i wasn't allowed to eat anything after that she made starving us a regular thing then my parents came back and took us to the hospital for a checkup like for part two this is part two of my babysitting horror story. So like I said, my parents came back from vacation and took us to the hospital for a checkup. They took us to the hospital because they noticed we were getting really skinny. When we got to the hospital, the doctor said my two-year-old baby sister only weighed 19 to 20 pounds. And I was 13 at the time, I only weighed 90 pounds. The look on my mom and dad's face was enough. So when we got back into the car, I finally told them about what the babysitter had been doing. Now hold on tight, because the way my mama reacted to this, you would have thought somebody possessed her. Immediately, my mom started going off on my dad, like yelling and screaming at him. And he just had his hands in his face. I was so confused as to what was going on. See, I didn't know my dad when I was younger. He passed away before I was born. And so I found out that my current dad at the time wasn't my real dad. And I didn't know the truth until this whole babysitting situation. She babysat me for like a month and then my parents fired her. I'm 23 now. I honestly could have forgotten all about her. Well, just last year, my mom told me that that babysitter was my dad's ex-wife. Well, anyways, this is what my mom did to my stepdad's ex-wife after we went to the hospital. This is part three of my babysitting horror story. So like I said, I finally told my parents about what the babysitter had been doing to me and my baby sister. I was so confused as to why my mom started going off on my dad right away after I told her. But 10 years later, I'm finally finding out that my babysitter was my stepdad's ex-wife. My mom told me that she had been really iffy about letting my stepdad's ex-wife babysit me and my little sister but she only agreed with it to save money so my mom told my dad to get out of the driver's seat she got into the driver's seat and she started driving i wasn't exactly sure where we were going and my dad didn't know either but we ended up at the babysitter's house luckily for her she wasn't home because my mom would have dropped her shit she might have even got a murder charge that day but my mom told me to get a rock and to just start chucking them at her windows so that's what i did there me and my mom were chucking rocks at my babysitter's window and my dad was watching us holding my baby sister my mom didn't take her to court or anything i'm not exactly sure why probably something to do with my dad but my mom made my dad cut contact with her completely and they fired her story time of how i found out that my mom was actually my older sister my older sister never really liked me as a child we were never close i never knew why but i was guessing it was because of the 10 year age gap but i'm pretty sure she hated me because she couldn't even look me in the eye i cannot make this up she would not look me in the eye but she never really talked to my parents either she kind of just kept to herself all the time sometimes i have vivid memories of when we were younger and she would always be arguing with my parents about something and i always thought it had something to do with me well i was right it had everything to do with me because eventually my sister turned 18 and she moved out for two years i didn't talk to her at all i honestly don't even think i had her number saved and i'm pretty sure that she didn't have mine well two years later and i was 10 at the time she reached out to me via social media i'm not sure how she found my instagram name but it was just my name so she probably just typed that in and found me she dm'd me and told me that she wanted to talk about something very important and that she would like to talk over the phone so we exchanged numbers and we called that same night and she told me that when she was younger my dad had taken advantage of her and gotten her pregnant and had me 
This is part two of how I found out that my mom was actually my older sister. So like I said, my older sister had reached out to me via social media and told me that she was actually my mother. And so after we got off the phone that same night, I lost it at dinner and I went off on my parents and I screamed at them. And I told them that I would go to the police and tell them everything and I would tell them the truth unless they just let me live with my older sister. And they tried to explain themselves and their reasoning was that they wanted to keep the family together because of their traditional values. And it would have just made their lives a lot harder going through all the court proceedings so they just kept the family together and so they clearly didn't want me to go into the police so they said that i could go live with my older sister so she came to get me but she lived in a different state so it kind of took a while i still had to stay in the house for like a week or so before she came but i packed all my stuff and i was ready to go and when we went back to where she lived we immediately called the police and told them everything fast forward a little bit they did some dna testing my sister's dna matched as my biological mother's and then my dad was my biological father and they saw how the ages just didn't match properly so they took my father to jail Story time about the bestiality children next door. If you don't know what bestiality is, hold on. So I was living in this neighborhood for five years. Throughout those five years, not one time did my family go and talk to the other neighbors. Why didn't we talk to the other neighbors? Because it's not like we were trying to make friends or anything. We didn't care for them. Well, one day, the neighbor's kids were playing outside while I was playing outside. My mom urged me to go over there and play with the other kids, even though I didn't really want to. So there was a little boy and a little girl. I went over there and I asked if I could pet their dog because they were playing with their dog. They said yes, and the dog started playing with me and started licking my face. Yeah, keep that in mind. Then we started talking about the bus because we ride the same bus. We have the same bus stop. After playing with them for a while, they invited me inside. I asked my mom if I could go. She said yes. So the little boy ran into his room and then the little girl invited me to her room. So to pass time, I asked her what she does for fun. She said she plays with her brother. And then she asked if I liked animals. Obviously, I say yes. And so she asked to show me a trick. That's when she brings the dog into the room and proceeds to pull down her pants. Like for part two. This is part two of the bestiality children next door. Like I said, she brings her dog into the room and pulls down her pants. Totally forgot a very crucial piece of information. I was in fifth grade at the time. That's why I did what I did in these next events. She pulls down her pants and lets the dog go at it the same dog that licked my face previously the dog like went for it like he knew what to do the only words that i could form was ew she had trained this dog to do that so after i said ew she immediately got up and put her pants up and like she was surprised that i was grossed out like any normal human being wouldn't be then out of nowhere she starts crying and i started feeling really bad so i told her that i wouldn't tell anybody and so she tells me i had to switch to my dog because my hamster wouldn't do it then she gets up and opens this drawer and proceeds to pull out a dead hamster she says he wouldn't lick he would only bite she starts crying really hard and says she feels uncomfortable and she would feel better if i let the dog do what it did to her as much as i didn't want to i wanted her to feel comfortable so i did it this is part three of the bestiality children next door like i said i gave in i didn't know how it was supposed to feel it felt weird but it didn't feel good so i stopped and she started giggling and i just felt so uncomfortable so i wanted to go home then she started acting like she was annoyed and started getting really mad at me but i was like whatever and so she let me leave well it was a sunday that day and the next day we had to go to school but she wasn't at the bus stop and so i get on the bus and i go to school that day and everything is fine until like halfway through the school day my mom comes to pick me up early she would never come to pick me up early for no reason i would usually have an appointment and i would know about it before i would know if i was gonna leave school that day and was gonna get picked up but i wasn't notified so my mom came to pick me up and while we were on the way home she said that my dad had stayed home from work that day and when we got home we were going to have to have a talk about what i did with the neighbor's dog i promise you're gonna want to like for part four this is part four of the bestiality children next door baby that rhymed like i said my mom is driving me home right now and we're gonna have a talk when we get home with my dad about what i did with the neighbor's dog i tried to explain myself to her in the car but she wouldn't let me talk she didn't want me to say anything until we got home but when we got home it wasn't just my dad sitting in the living room the neighbors were there the mom dad and the two kids so i was like is this a setup and the neighbor's dad is fuming as soon as i walked into the living room he stood up and tried to get in my face mind you i was in fifth grade he did that in front of my parents my parents told him to back up obviously but there was a lot of tension and he was in my face he was saying how dare you force my daughter to do that with our own dog that's when i knew what the fuck was going on this little fucker basically after i left my neighbor's house the day before the daughter went up to the parents and told them that i showed her the trick with the dog and forced her to do it but this is when things take a turn babes this is part five of the bestiality children next door like i said my neighbor's parents and their kids and my parents and i were all in my living room discussing about this dog situation so i went ahead and explained myself that she was a fucking liar and that nothing that's coming out of her mouth was true and that she was just lying and lying and the neighbor's parents weren't too happy about the fact that i was calling their daughter a liar and the mom just lost it and started screaming at me and going at me and just saying all these mean terrible things it was almost as if she 
had a personal problem with me well baby so i started crying really hard once the neighbor's mom started yelling at me i don't know what that did to the neighbor's daughter but she folded she said i lied i lied i'll tell you guys the truth she finally admitted that it was her idea and she's the one who introduced it to me then once her parents expressed their disapproval this fucking child she says i thought it was okay because i saw mom doing it when dad wasn't home story time about how my brother caught me hooking up with his girlfriend my brother started dating this girl last year and they were hanging out every day also around that time last year i started to figure out my sexuality well since my brother and her would hang out every single day at my house i would see her all the time and i started to get little feelings something came over me baby i was like god is a woman i just kind of came to the conclusion that i liked girls since she was dating my brother and they were home all the time me and her kind of started talking too we exchanged snapchats you know just a friendly exchange keep in mind that at the time she didn't know my sexuality nobody did so that night after we exchanged snapchats i was snapchatting somebody else and i was sending them some explicit pictures since i recently just added my brother's girlfriend on snapchat her name was at the top so i accidentally clicked on her name and sent her the explicit picture i didn't even realize that i did that until i received a snap from her out of nowhere and she had sent an explicit picture back like for part two this is part two of how my brother caught me hooking up with his girlfriend so like I said, I accidentally sent my brother's girlfriend an explicit picture on Snapchat. Not knowing that I even sent it, I received an explicit picture back from her. I said, baby, I'll really bite your titties. Stop playing with me. But after she sent me the picture, I responded with hard eyes. And then she texted me and said that she would be coming over tomorrow to hang out with my brother. So I basically said, cool, I'll see you around. And then she came over the next day. So the next day came and she was at my house, but I wasn't talking to her. She was with my brother. And then she walks into my room. I was like, hey, where's... R rob we'll just call the brother that she said she sent him to the store to get some snacks I asked if she wanted to come chill on my bed she agreed and right off the bat we started you know we getting it bonking having a good time that's when the door swings open and there my brother is standing at my doorway like for part three this is going to be part three of the time my brother caught me hooking up with his girlfriend so my brother swung my door open and there he was standing at my door watching me and his girlfriend while we were immediately he was just like oh really you're both fucking gross that's when he turned around and left later on we had to have like a family talk about this and i had to come out about my sexuality to my parents and it was really embarrassing my parents were super accepting of me coming out but my brother wasn't as accepting and i'm thinking it's mostly because of the fact that he had to find out the way that he did because it wasn't my sexuality itself that bothered him it was how he found out later on he told me that he walked into my room because he heard us laughing in there and he wanted to ask her what exactly she wanted from the store he was gonna ask her if she just wanted to come with but that's what he walked in on so my brother went ahead and broke up with his girlfriend that's when me and her started dating and we've been dating for about two years now i said i'd be sharing more stories of things that happened to me while i was younger that i've kept secret for my entire life and haven't told anybody so here's another story fair warning this video might be a little triggering i was really really young at the time i don't exactly remember what age i was around 8 or 13 years old me and my friends were going to this haunted maze and it was around halloween time it was one of my friend's parents that was taking us there and it was a group of five or six of my friends while me and my friends were going through this maze we were standing in a line and i was standing in the very back so while we were walking i ended up tripping on my shoelace and i fell to the side where there was curtains it was the curtains where the workers would pop out and try to scare you when i fell i tried to yell for my friends but because of the sound effects of the maze they couldn't hear me and by the time i got up they were gone so i started walking and i eventually got to a place where you could only go right or left and i went left and once i went left i ended up in a circular room where there was five passageways but there was also a group of teenage boys and i didn't even see them at first all i know is i turned around and got grabbed like for part two this is part two of the time I got lost in a haunted maze. Like I said, I lost track of my friends and I was looking for my friends and I ended up in a part of the maze where there was all these guys that I didn't even see at first. All I know is I turned around and I got grabbed. So I screamed. I was super young at the time. I was defenseless. I didn't know what to do. Those guys seemed like they were around their teenage years and they were laughing and making a joke out of it. One of them was laughing and they told their friend, grab her legs. And so the friend grabbed my legs and they were tugging me and pulling me and then they started to pull my pants down panic was filling over my body i couldn't even scream when you're young you'd always think you know what to do at these moments but you really don't you just freeze up and that's exactly what i did i just froze up but thankfully as soon as i felt my pants starting to get pulled down another group of people turned the corner and that's when the boys dropped me and ran like for part three 
This is going to be part three of the time I got lost in a haunted maze. Like I said, another group of people started to turn the corner. That's when the boys dropped me and they ran. Those group of people didn't really get to see what was going on. So they asked me if I was okay. I told them that I was good. Me being super young and scared, I didn't really want to tell them what happened. My parents were also really iffy about me going out and I didn't want there to be a situation that would make them not trust me anymore. So they started to walk me out of the maze, you guys. And I'm guessing we were nearing towards the exit. But as we were nearing towards the exit, I completely forgot about the boys. I had realized that I didn't have a bracelet that I was wearing. Me being young and trying not to annoy the people that found me and were helping me get out of the maze, I wanted to turn around, but I didn't want to tell them that I needed to turn around because I lost something. So I ran back. As I was running back trying to find this bracelet in this maze, I had ran into the same group of teenage boys who assaulted me. Like for part four. This is going to be part four of the time I got lost in a haunted maze. I had lost something in the maze and once I ran back to find it, I had ran into the same group of teenage boys who assaulted me. Like I said previously, I had completely forgotten about these boys. How did I forget about these boys? I'm not sure. I was very young, very dumb, and I wish I wasn't scared at the time to tell those people who were walking me out of the maze that I had lost something because I'm sure they would have been nice enough to help me find it. But I was scared. I didn't want to annoy them. So as soon as I saw those boys, I was thinking life or death. Why was I I think in life or death i'm not sure but that was my instinct so i took it upon myself to do the dash and i ran and ran and ran and i did not look back i didn't remember which way to go out of the maze but i somehow did make it out thankfully the lord was really watching over me that day and once i got out i was screaming for my friends I was screaming their names. I was looking for them everywhere. Eventually I found my friends and I just hugged one of them and started bawling. This is the time my mom faked her death so she didn't have to take care of me and my siblings. Yes, this girl really faked her death. So at the time I was five and my little brother was three. It started off with my mom saying that she didn't feel well and she couldn't pick me up from school so the bus would have to take me home. Well, a few months after she started getting picked up from our house by this black car. She said that car was picking her up because of her so-called doctor's appointments. And she wasn't able to drive herself because she was too sick. Well, one day when this car came to pick her up, she never came home. Me and my little brother were sitting around for a couple days waiting for her to come home, but she never came home and we were young so we didn't do anything. Eventually, my aunt came over to our house and told my little brother and I that our mom had passed away and that she was cremated and they kept the ashes. So our aunt started taking care of us until one day I saw my aunt getting picked up by that same black car. That's when I started to get suspicious of everything and I decided to check these ashes. When I checked, it was flower, like for part two. This is part two of the time my mom faked her death so she didn't have to take care of me and my siblings. Like I said, my aunt told me that my mom had died and they cremated her and they let her keep the ashes and that she was going to start taking care of us. Me not knowing how long the cremating process actually took at the time since I was so young, I believed her. Until one day I saw my aunt getting picked up by the same black car that my mom used to get picked up by before she died. That's when I decided to check these supposed ashes and it was actually flour. So one day when my aunt got picked up by this black car, I decided to follow her. I didn't have a car i was five years old so i had to follow them by walking and hiding behind bushes i was able to follow them up the street and once they turned the corner and there i saw my mom standing on the side of the street that's when i see the car stop and i see my aunt get out and approach my mother she tells my mom to give her her money for covering for her and taking care of me and my little brother mom says she faked her death because my dad wasn't in our lives and she didn't want to take care of us anymore i'm older now and i cut her off completely and i have full custody of my little brother this is going to be a story time about how my whole school went on a manhunt for one student. Why was they looking for his ass? I'm going to get into it. Let me clarify right now that I am a victim. I do not want nobody in the comments saying, why didn't you do this? Why did you do this? It could have been me. It could have been any of us. That's why I minded my business throughout this whole thing. So I got to school a little late that day, but when I got to my class, I could tell there was a little tension in the air. I didn't know what it was, whether it was a teacher having a problem with a student or a student having a problem with another student. I just knew that the energy was off. So I'm sitting down in class minding my business per usual. The next thing I see is my teacher try to grab this one boy's phone. He immediately snatches it off his desk before she can grab it. That's when they get into this little tug of war type of thing. But the next thing you know, everybody sees this boy molly -wop the teacher in the stomach. She falls and he runs out the classroom. Some kids started laughing and thought it was funny until the teacher wasn't waking up. This is when things get bad, like for part two. This is going to be part two of the time my whole school went on a manhunt for one student. So like I said, this kid punched this teacher and ran out of the classroom and the teacher wasn't waking up anymore. So as you can imagine, a room full of drained high school students who just woke up a few hours ago, we were all kind of just like looking around at each other. No one thought to, I don't know, tell somebody that this shit happened. Like, were we silent? 
or were we silenced? I blame the school system for making school so early because I feel like once you get to school, your cognitive functions get out the window. So I really try hard not to feel guilty about this and I try not to blame my other classmates for not doing anything as well. And then eventually like five minutes passed and they were like, okay, maybe we should check if she's awake at least. That's when one of the students get up and start to check. Well, they check and they say that she's not breathing obviously set something off in our brains like this is an emergency something needs to happen now that's when a bunch of us ran to the office and they called the ambulance like for part three this is gonna be part three of the time my whole school went on a manhunt for one student so we went to the office and told them how the kid punched the teacher and the teacher wasn't waking up immediately a bunch of staff ran to the class to see where the teacher was and what was going on with her i didn't personally run to the office when i say we i mean my classmates so i was still in the classroom when all the staff ran in so they told everybody to exit the classroom and everybody needed to get out of the classroom because they needed to give her some privacy and examine her so we were all standing outside of my classroom and it was like 30 kids the teacher that was next door to us was really close to my teacher they would always talk in the hallways they had their lunch periods together their study periods together and her door was wide open why didn't we go in there and tell her what happened honestly like i said we were high school students it was really early so she came out once she saw all of us standing outside in the hallway and she was like what's going on once we told her that a kid punched the teacher and that she passed out her face drops and she announced that the teacher was pregnant mind you nobody knew this because she hadn't announced it herself yet this is when they called the ambulance like for part three this is going to be part four of the time my whole school went on a manhunt for one student. So now everybody knows that this teacher who has passed out on the floor and is not waking up is pregnant. That's when they decided to call the ambulance. I'm guessing they didn't call the ambulance earlier because they were waiting to see if they could try to get her to wake up. They went ahead and put the whole school on lockdown. Nobody was allowed to leave their class and me and my classmates went into the teacher's classroom next to us. We were sitting in the classroom for like a couple hours and throughout these couple of hours, what we were hearing outside of the classroom was complete chaos. There was a bunch of cops, a bunch of cop radios, there was dogs, we heard a bunch of yelling and running and that's when the announcements go off once again. And that's when they announced that they're looking for that kid and they can't find him anywhere in the school and they're gonna let the day go back to normal but if anybody sees him to report it at this point everyone at school already knew what happened because of social media and once they heard on the announcements that they have permission to look for the kid lots of kids took that as this is a scavenger hunt when i say lots of kids i mean the whole school like for part five this is going to be part five of the time my whole school went on a manhunt for one student. But once they announced to report the kid who punched the pregnant teacher in the stomach if we see him throughout the school day, lots of kids took that as find him and bring him to me and started hunting him down. I mean like as they should so anyways yeah complete chaos broke out as soon as that bell rang child you would be able to leave school and nobody would notice everybody was in the hallways people were looking under the stairwells they were checking in the janitor's closet opening up doors that they shouldn't be opening and with everybody looking for this kid we found him pretty fast we did what the police and police dogs couldn't do this kid was hiding in the band room under the band instructor's desk they found him and arrested him on school property we got word that that teacher did in fact lose her baby but she was okay and she was alive but she chose not to work at that school again but she never came back and i don't know i think that kid is still in prison it's gonna be a story time while i take my makeup off about how i was the crazy ex so my boyfriend at the time we were on and off and he kicked me out and told me to pack my stuff and i had to be out that night i definitely packed my stuff for sure packed my stuff and moved it to a different closet in his house that he never opens so i started sleeping in his car but he kept finding me there every morning when he had to go to work so i decided that i was going to continue sleeping in his car and i was going to wake up a little earlier before he had to go to work and i knocked on his door and i told him that i needed to get some stuff that i forgot i decided that i was going to take my sweet time up until the time he had to go to work so i could have the house all to myself i slept in that house for multiple days without this man knowing is he ever gonna find out i don't know listen linda i honestly did what i had to do when i do it again well one day i remember him coming home and i kept hearing a girl's voice this time when he came home it was kind of unexpected so I had to run under his bed. I kept hearing this girl's voice all the way from downstairs until he came upstairs. And so once he sat down on the bed, I jumped out from out that mother and I jumped on his ass. But I didn't see no girl. Apparently he was just on the phone. He dragged me out the house, told me I was crazy. Said he was gonna call the cops if he saw me there again. But all is good. This was like five years ago. Me and this man are married now. He is now my baby daddy. And we got three kids. This is gonna be a story time of how I almost drowned someone's baby. Y'all, I cannot sleep at night because of this. I cannot believe that I did this to someone's child. But let me go ahead and explain myself. So I was babysitting for this one rich ass family. What's so amazing about it was the fact that the parents were never home. At the same time, I was just a senior in high school. I didn't have much to do after school either. I didn't have hobbies. I didn't play a sport. So I had all the time in the world to babysit for their kid and house sit for them. This baby was only one years old. Since the baby was so young, I had to keep eyes on it at all times. 
they had this big pool area and they said that if I ever wanted to go swimming I could and there was a floaty for the baby one day while I was house sitting and babysitting for them I went in the pool and I put the baby on the floaty thing somehow I forgot that that baby existed I felt something in the bottom of my feet at the pool it was like slippery so I kicked it out the way because I thought it was a toy and then when I turn around me I see that the baby is not on the floaty I look down and I see this tiny human sunk in the water like for part two this is part two of how I almost drowned someone's baby. But when this was happening, I was on my phone, so I was distracted. I looked down in the pool and I see that the baby is drowning. I don't really know how to explain the way that my heart skipped a beat at this exact moment. Like my heart was beating regularly and then all of a sudden it skipped two beats at a time. My ass was in my forehead. Immediately dived down into the pool. Took out the baby, but the baby was suffocating. Now listen, I ain't never did CPR, but God blessed me with those skills in that very moment. I was able to keep myself calm and did CPR on the baby and was able to get it to breathe again. I did not tell nobody shit about this. I didn't tell the parents. The baby is fine. I really should have told the parents because what if it did cause a health issue but from what i've seen the baby's fine yeah i didn't tell them what happened but i quit babysitting because i felt guilty they haven't said anything about their baby dysfunctioning so the baby is fine just because of this i pulled myself out of babysitting and i'll never babysit ever again because i'm clearly not responsible enough this is a story time about the time I dated the school shooter. This might be a long story, so please bear with me. Before you form any opinions on anyone in the story, please wait all the way until the end. Trust me, you're gonna wanna listen to this story time. There was this boy who went to my school and he was really shy and he got bullied a lot. He got bullied a lot because he was a lot more feminine than other guys. And I'm just the type of person to give people the benefit of the doubt, so I went ahead and started talking to him more to see the type of person that he actually was. He didn't sit with anybody during lunch, so one day I went up to him and I sat down right next to him and I started talking to him immediately i loved this boy everything about him he was extremely sweet and considerate and understanding and i knew that if other people took the time to get to know him they would like him too so we exchanged numbers and we started to facetime a lot as we started to facetime more i started to notice things that were a little off about him every single conversation that we had he would always have to bring up about how much he hated this one boy in his tech class and how he would shoot up the school just to get rid of him like for part two this is part two about how I dated the school shooter. So let me backtrack a little bit from part one. After we exchanged numbers. We started to make plans to hang out outside of school and we just started talking more outside of school and eventually we started dating. He never really talked about this guy in his tech class until we started dating. Keep that in mind. For some reason, that guy in his tech class really bothered him. Like I said, he started talking about how he would shoot up the school just to get rid of this guy. At first, I thought it was just a joke and he was just saying that until he kept saying it. He started being so serious about it and he started planning it out and exactly what he would do when he did it. That started to scare me and so I decided that I was gonna record one of these conversations, just in case. Well, during that conversation, he said he planned to shoot up the school the next day. He said, in these exact words, fuck it, you know what, I'm just gonna do it, tomorrow. Then he tells me to not come to school the next day. That's when I know that he was actually being serious. Immediately after, I started writing up an email to the school like for part three. This is gonna be part three of the time I dated the school shooter. So his exact plan was to use this new gun that his dad had just recently bought. And his exact goal was to get rid of that guy in his tech class. And his tech class was in the beginning of the school day. So after I wrote that email to the school about his plan and inserted the recording that I secretly took of him admitting to it, I realized that I had sent that email at around 12.05 a.m. Most of the time, the teachers don't ever email you back unless the school day has already started. That morning, for some reason, everything in my gut was telling me I sent the email too late. They're not gonna open it in time. They're not gonna see it in time my mom just thought that i was sick that day so i told her that i was gonna take a walk around the neighborhood and i totally forgot to mention that he lived in my neighborhood I told my mom i was going on a walk but i was actually going to his house to tell his parents by the time i got there his mom told me that the dad is driving him to school I told her his plan let her listen to the recording so she checked where the dad put the gun and it was not there she called the dad to tell him to check his bag but the dad said he had already dropped him off at school and he was halfway home his tech class was first period like for part four this is gonna be part four of the time i dated the school shooter so let me do a little recap so like i said i ran to his house that morning to try to tell his parents his plan about shooting up the school and i showed them the recording for proof well, i was only able to tell the mom his plan because the dad had already taken him to school she checked where this new gun he was planning on using was supposed to be and it wasn't there then when she called the dad to tell him to check their son's bag the dad said one the gun should still be there because he hadn't touched it since he put it away and two he had already dropped him off at school and he was halfway home i didn't even tell my mama where i was going i hopped in the car with my boyfriend's mom and we zoomed the dad had taken a u-turn and he was speeding towards the school too this point first period was about to start in five minutes it was us against time we were passing cars running red lights when we got to the school the mom barely parked the car the dad was already in there i'm pretty sure but as we were running inside the dad was coming out with my boyfriend this is what happened after like for part five 
this is gonna be part five about the time I dated the school shooter. Like I said, my boyfriend's parents and I sped to the school and got there in time to stop him from carrying out his plan of shooting the school. I'm guessing the dad told them that there was like an emergency dentist appointment or something. Once they got in the car, the dad made my boyfriend open his bag and there was the gun. Child, the way my heart. You hear that? That's how fast my heart was beating at the time. It was so hard to believe that he actually brought that gun to school, like he was actually going to carry out that plan. But from what I've seen, he was just so sweet and just does not seem like that type of guy at all. Mind you, his family was a very respected family in our neighborhood. They were super sweet, everybody loved them, they just knew that the son was antisocial. After all this happened, I did not tell anybody about this, like I'm a real bitch. I did not tell my best friends, I didn't tell my parents, I didn't tell nobody. Some time had passed and I hadn't talked to him, he wasn't coming to school and I was actually blocked on all socials. Even his parents blocked me. Went to his house multiple times, knocked on the door, nobody answered. Eventually someone told me that they moved but I still had some unfinished business like for part six so this is gonna be me finishing the unfinished business like I said him and his family moved they didn't tell anybody anything they just packed their stuff and they left everyone in the neighborhood was so confused but I kept my mouth shut like I said I'm a real bitch I needed to find the answers as to why why did he want to get rid of that tech guy so bad well 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 so I went to tech first period just to see who was all in the classroom I didn't actually go in the classroom I was just standing outside the classroom based on where my ex was saying that he sat in the room I figured out who the tech guy was as soon as the bell rang for first period to be over i ran to that tech class i stopped that guy that my boyfriend was talking about i told him everything and that is when he admitted to me that one day they were hanging out mind you this boy is a senior my ex was a sophomore they hooked up but my ex was ashamed of what he did so he threatened to say that he was taken advantage of that boy said well i'm gonna tell people the truth then if you're gonna do that so basically my ex was embarrassed of his sexuality I'm guessing after we started dating he started to get super ashamed of what he did and that's why he decided to shoot up the school This is a story time of why I don't eat at other people's house no more. Me and my best friend, we were like 11 or 12 at the time and we were having a sleepover at her house. We had hung out outside of school many times before. This would just be the first time I went over to her house. My mom drops me off and just lets me walk inside. When I went up to the door, my best friend answered and she was like, hey, can you grab a shoe? Immediately, I could tell that the house wasn't very clean, but I knew it wasn't her fault. It's not because she asked me to grab a shoe. I could see behind her and could tell that the house was just really messy. It really did look like an episode of Hoarders, but I grabbed a shoe and I helped her look for that fly. So it was me, my bestie, and her grandma looking for this big ass bug. We got a little tired, so we sat down to eat something and her grandma made us a snack. I was a little scared to eat, not gonna lie, but I didn't want to make my best friend feel bad, so I went ahead and ate my food. Well, I was only able to eat some of it because we had left the basement door open, and we saw the bug fly down there. So we stopped eating, ran down to the basement, and we saw the bug fly behind this box. We moved this box, and I swear 100 families of spiders and their ancestors started spewing out, like for part two. This is gonna be part two of why I don't eat at other people's house no more. Like I said, so many spiders started spewing out from behind this box. I genuinely thought that these spiders were going to eat all of us alive. It was not a fun situation. We did not run fast enough. These spiders started crawling all over us. I think I saw a lighter somewhere and considered setting myself on fire. I want you guys to imagine like my whole entire body covered up with spiders. That's what it felt like, but there was only like five or six on me. The grandma gets a blanket and starts whipping us with it. She's like trying to dust the spiders off. I see my best friend start stripping. I was a little uh, about that, but I was like, fuck it. Anything to get these spiders off. Once we felt like we were good, we ran upstairs. My best friend started crying to me and apologizing and saying how much she hates her life and how she's so embarrassed. But I told her that all is good and this doesn't change the way that I see her at all. We have our little moment and then we sit down to eat again. And you know, I'm going in on my little spaghettios. But all of a sudden, they start getting crunchy. I ignore it and I get down to the bottom of the bowl. When I look down, there is a half-eaten spider in the bottom of the bowl, like for part three. This is going to be part three of why I don't eat at other people's house anymore. So like I said, I was munching and grunching on some SpaghettiOs. It's getting crunchy and I'm like, what's this crunch? Where's all this crunch coming from? I was like, bruh, it's probably some expired SpaghettiOs, but let me finish this bowl so my friend don't feel bad. And I got to the end and there was only some soup left. I saw a half-eaten spider. The same spiders that we had seen downstairs. My body? It started vibrating. I was shaking. I seized out. I think I passed out. This was not a good situation. I did have a phobia of spiders. I told my best friend, listen, babes, I love you. You know I love you, but this cannot go on no longer. I'm gonna have to go home. I felt like such a terrible friend, but I did call my mom 
and she came to get me and she took me home. I told her what happened and she was upset with my friend's grandma. From then on, we only had sleepovers at my house. And ever since my family found out about her living situation, we would go over there sometimes to help them clean. We would bring food and games. I'm grown now, but me and this girl ended up falling out because of some drama. This is going to be a story time of when my stepbrother killed our dog and fed it to me and my little sister for dinner. Let's get right into it. So my mom had died when I was younger and my dad had remarried. So I had a stepmom and she had a son. This motherfucker, let me tell you, we did not get along. I fought with him all the time, but it's because he was a little bitch. He would always bully me and my little sister and make fun of our weight. He would threaten to beat us up just for fun. Like, you in our house, get it together. I began to scold my dad because he was the one who brought them in this fucking house and he wasn't doing nothing about it. He knew they were tearing our family apart and he did nothing. So, anyways, one night, my parents weren't home and my stepbrother had to watch me and my little sister. Like I said, he was a little bitch. So he was upset because he had plans to hang out with his girlfriend. But that really sounds like a personal problem. <laughs> Let me stop coming at this man. It's just making me angry thinking about it. So my dad had sent my stepbrother money so he could go get groceries so he could make us dinner. But my stepbrother didn't want to so he sent me instead. Oh, mind you, I was like 12 at the time. And he sent me alone and my little sisters were sleeping. When I came home and knocked on the door, I noticed that our dog didn't run up to see who was at the door like she usually did. Then I smelled something coming from the kitchen, like for part two. This is gonna be part two of how my stepbrother killed our dog and fed it to me and my little sister for dinner so like i said i got home from the grocery store and our dog didn't run up to the door like she usually did i didn't think much of it and then i smelled something coming from the kitchen what could he possibly be cooking if there's no groceries and no i didn't automatically think oh he's cooking our dog it's just hold on whatever was cooking on the stove smelled like shit it made the whole house stink but like i said i didn't think too much of it now that i think of it i heard the laundry machine going and my family had a set schedule for laundry like we never did laundry off schedule so that was kind of weird my parents are just very organized people besides the point so i go upstairs to wake up my little sister and i see my stepbrother pass me and go down to the kitchen an hour or so goes by and he calls us downstairs and says dinner is ready all he did was boil some corn give us canned peas and some slab of meat the meat was burnt by the way but i guess food is food so we started eating this atrocious meal and all i could think about were these tiny little hairs that just kept going in my mouth i kept pulling pieces out of my mouth mind you this hair had no color it was burnt now our dog loved to eat dinner with us but she was nowhere to be seen i started looking for her and i realized that she's missing this is gonna be part three of the time my stepbrother killed our dog and fed it to us for dinner so like i said i started looking around for the dog I asked my little sister if she's seen her she said no so i asked my stepbrother and he says no too somebody fucking lie who the fuck is lame because it ain't fucking me let me fuck this up okay so we trying to find this dog i call my dad he says she probably ran away but no one let her outside that day and i know she didn't just go outside so the days pass and we're still looking for her and we hang up missing posters i got my friends to help me my dad's looking my stepmother my little sister and even my stepbrother as time goes on my little sister and i began to fall sick we go to the doctor they say we have stomach problems they said it was probably from something that we ate and i'm thinking to myself hmm what abnormal thing did i eat that random slab of meat because there was no groceries where the fuck did he find that meat from so i'm putting pieces together you know we're falling sick the meat was hairy our dog is missing hmm eventually my dad ends up finding the dog but it was dead and cut up this can be part four of the time my stepbrother cooked our dog and fed it to me and my little sister for dinner so my dad ends up finding our dog hidden under some sticks in our backyard but it was dead and cut into pieces i might have been 12 but i wasn't dumb i knew what the fuck was going on so once my dad brings us this news after he's done telling us what he found i pulled him to the other room i told him what i peeped i was sobbing and i told him i think it was my stepbrother who did it i told him about the dog not meeting me at the door the smell of the kitchen the hairs the laundry the fact that we got sick i gave him all the puzzle pieces but he told me that he didn't believe me he said and i quote your stepbrother might be mean to you but he's not crazy i said because it's right there it is right in front of you the evidence speaks for its fucking self i ain't gotta say too much so my dad ends up not doing anything to my stepbrother he faced literally zero consequences i'm 19 now and i don't talk to him anymore till this day i 110 percent believe that my stepbrother did it story time of the sickest i felt in my whole life you might want to hold your breath for this one so my boyfriend and i had been dating for like eight months or so i had my own place so i let him move in with me one day my best friend decides that she wants to become a hairdresser and so she started taking clients and doing people's hair i became one of her clients because she did hair really good and she didn't charge me as much because i was her bestie and whenever i needed her to do my hair she would come over to my place well over time my best friend and my boyfriend began to become closer i didn't think anything of it because i trusted my best friend and my boyfriend sometimes my best friend and my boyfriend would be alone together because if she was doing my hair that day and i wasn't home i would make my boyfriend open the door for her she could just go ahead and walk on in get her stuff set up and then once i was there she could do my hair like i said i trusted them enough so i wasn't worried about it bitch i should have been worried about it one night my boyfriend tells me that he's gonna be working a little late that night so you know i'm like okay that's fine so that night i was just sitting on my bed scrolling through my social then i opened snapchat 
watching my best friend's story and she had made a brand new private story. She added me to that story and there was a picture of my best friend and my boyfriend in bed together. This is gonna be part two of the sickest I felt in my whole life. The pain in my chest when I saw the picture of my best friend and my boyfriend in bed together. I started heaving. I was wheezing like <gasps> so I was thinking to myself whether I should slide up and say anything or if I should pull up to her house and whoop her ass. It had to have been at her house because that man had no place to go that's why he was living with me. This man is over here homie hopping. Meanwhile he don't even got a home. Although I was very upset I was surprisingly calm. I decided that I'm not gonna pull up and beat both of their asses. I decided that I was just gonna take his stuff and throw it out the door. And as I'm walking to his room I hear what sounds like a window is opening and it sounds like it's coming from my boyfriend's room. So I keep walking to his room to check out whatever this sound is i walk in there and there my best friend and my boyfriend are sleeping on the bed that i bought him in my house bitch like for part three this is gonna be part three of the sickest i felt in my entire life but like i said i walked in the room and saw my best friend and my boyfriend sleeping sleeping i'm like okay we taking naps we taking naps bitch in my fucking house let's take a fucking nap then i'm gonna put both of y'all to sleep so my boyfriend actually looked like he was sleeping but i could tell that my best friend was faking it because she had just posted that snap only 10 minutes ago it was clearly intended for me to see so i woke up to the bed i go over to where my boyfriend is sleeping and when i tell you i submit the shit out that there whacked that nail like i was trained for it meanwhile my best friend's over there like oh my god oh my god i'm like bitch i'm about to get to you but right now we focus in on him but i'm gonna get to you i promise so i lift the covers off of them and i see that they're both naked so that's really when i started pouncing on him scratching him biting him you know all that good stuff meanwhile my best friend's over there trying to put her clothes on so she could go girl you ain't going nowhere because after i was done pouncing on him i charged towards her like for part four it's gonna be part four of the sickest that I felt in my whole life. So I had just gotten done beating up my boyfriend after catching him with my best friend. As I was beating up my boyfriend, my best friend was getting herself together so she could go. Like, where are you going home, girl? Our business isn't finished here, bestie. So I charge towards her and she's ready because she knows I don't play that. And she puts up her fists. I run up to her, she tries to swing, dodged it. I grab her hair and I drag her to the door. Maybe not the bedroom door the front door dragged her all the way out and kicked her out the door i locked the door then i went back to my boyfriend's room cussed him out a little more and started packing his stuff up for him i tell him that he has one day to get all of his stuff and leave or else i'm burning it i cut my friend off completely because she did some weird ass shit i don't know why she would do anything like that and i wasn't about to ask questions because i didn't give a fuck my boyfriend was over there trying to beg me to stay trying to say he was sorry and i just was not having it so i cut them both off girl the hairstyles and diddly wasn't that good it was not that good to keep him around fuck this is gonna be a story time of how me and my friends waged war on the nastiest girls at my high school. After watching all of the parts, you get to decide who won this war. And just a heads up, this will probably be the nastiest story time that I've ever posted. Let's get right into it. So at my high school, there was these group of girls that would keep themselves dirty so they could get attention from the boys. They would never take showers, they would always come to school stanking. It was so bad to the point where if you were in class with them, the teachers would have to open up all the windows and leave the door wide open so the smell could drift out. Like it was that bad you really could have passed out the school went as far as holding an assembly about how important hygiene is just because of these girls now these girls stayed together as a clique and they were on the track team and me and my friends were also on the track team our coach encouraged us to take showers after practice but she couldn't force us but she made it clear that she wanted us to take showers those girls wouldn't take full-on showers they just get in the water for like five seconds and then get out so one day me and my friends decided that all those girls were in the shower we were going to pour soap and shampoo all over them like for part two this is gonna be part two of how me and my friends waged war on the nastiest girls at our high school. As you could imagine, track practice sucked because of how bad they smelled. And mind you, they barely contributed to the track team. They were those girls that always pretended like they had an injury so they didn't have to practice. It was embarrassing, like why are you here? And so after practice, while they were taking their 10 second showers, me and my friends took bottles of soap and shampoo and poured it all over them. This made them like cuss us out. They were extremely angry, but they didn't do anything. So some time passes by and one of my friends had told me that her boyfriend had gave her an STD. So she's thinking, he didn't have this STD before and all of a sudden he has one. So where did he get it from? Then all of a sudden, next thing you know, one of those thanking wanking girls that we poured soap and shampoo all over starts posting on her story and she says, and I quote, 
you say I'm dirty, but your boyfriend doesn't think any less of me, so what does that make you? Eventually, my friend's boyfriend admitted to her that he had cheated on her with one of those girls. And it wasn't just the two of them. It was all those girls, my friend's boyfriend, and some of his friends. It was like a five-some. This is gonna be part three of how me and my friends waged war on the nastiest girls at our high school. So like I said, those girls that never took showers had gotten a train ran on them by one of my friend's boyfriend and some of his friends. This pissed my friend off so bad, she was acting out of character. And I say out of character, I'm talking about this girl was saying, oh, I'ma poison her, I'ma run this bitch up. Over. At the time it seemed excessive but just wait until you hear the whole story and you'll understand why it would have been justified. So my friend had asked her well her ex-boyfriend why he did what he did. He said that they didn't smell bad at the time and it was just spur of the moment. But he knew that his own girlfriend did not like those girls. My friend would talk shit about those girls to him and it's the fact that he still had the audacity to put his dingling in my friend after he had ran a train on those girls. Like that's disrespectful. And so to get back at these girls my friend decided that she was going to stay in the locker room for track practice after after all the girls left the locker room and she took a piss on all of those girls clothes this led to one of the girls getting a rash that got really bad to the point where she had to be hospitalized trust me you're gonna want to like for part four so this is gonna be part four of the time my friends and i waged war on the nastiest girls at our high school so after my friend had pissed on those girls clothes for giving her an std one of the girls got a really bad rash for wearing those clothes and had to be hospitalized now i would have said that my friend went too far if it wasn't for this so what my track team ended up going on a camping trip and the coach told those girls specifically that if they wanted to go on the camping trip that they were gonna have to be hygienic they were gonna have to take full-on showers they're gonna have to brush their teeth they're gonna have to bring a change of clothes and me and my friends had hoped that they weren't going to come on this camping trip so we could have our fun but they actually agreed to being hygienic and so they came on the camping trip i'm still taken aback at the events that happened on this camping trip so we're on the camping trip we're like the third day in we sat around the campfire and made s'mores and then we all went to sleep in our tents me and my friends we all shared a tent all my friends were asleep but i wasn't asleep yet i was still drifting asleep and then i heard somebody open our tent it was kind of dark but i could still make out who it was and it was one of those girls me and my friends were beefing with she gets to where my friend is sleeping and squats down and she takes a shit right on my friends this is gonna be part five of the time my friends and i waged war on the nastiest girls at our high school like i said we're on a camping trip and my friends and i are all sleeping in a tent one of those girls we're beefing with comes into the tent squats down on one of my friend's faces and takes a shit right on her face mind you she thought that i was sleeping so once i screamed at her like what the fuck are you doing she gets up and runs out of the tent this girl is butt ass naked okay my friend eventually wakes up and she's smacking her lips like what is that taste and i'm telling her like do not swallow whatever you do do not swallow and i'm like girl it's just some chocolate from the s'mores we made earlier i was trying to get her not to freak out because she was going to molly wop miss butt naked nasty she eventually figures out what it is and she's like is this some type of sick joke and so i'm telling her no bitch who the fuck do you think i am so i run out the tent and then i see one of those girls like fast walking towards the woods and she's looking behind her and then she sees me so i start running after her and she starts dashing through the woods i'm cussing her out like bitch you're fucking nasty the fuck is wrong which eventually our coaches hear the noise and they wake up like for part six this is gonna be part six of the time my friends and i waged war on the nastiest girls at our high school like i said after i'm chasing this girl for taking a shit on my friend's face i'm cussing her out running her behind her eventually i lose her in the woods and i have to walk back to where we were camping our coaches had woken up at that point and they were talking to my friend who had shit all over her face she was telling them like i don't even know what's going on and so once they saw me they were asking me like what's happening and i'm basically telling them everything that happened and so the coaches start looking for this girl eventually they find her butt naked somewhere they call that girl's parents and then my friend's parents to let them know what had happened and my friend's mom decided that she did not want my friend on the camping trip anymore so they cut the camping trip short and for the rest of the time they kept that girl and my friends separated just so you guys know me and my friends could not beat up those girls because we were athletic academic scholars bitch they are not worth it but once we went to school again the school ended up expelling all of those girls and it's because my friend's complaint about them was kind of the last straw they had so many complaints about their hygiene how dirty they were so the school was just kind of like okay we're done with y'all that was the end of it who do y'all think won this war this is gonna be a quick story time of how my parents found my only fans so i had just recently broken up with my boyfriend and my friends were trying to find ways to make me feel better they were trying to tell me to go on tinder and all these other dating apps to find a new man i didn't want to find a new man more than i wanted to make him jealous and so my friends were telling me a good way to get back at him is to post myself with another man but i had a better idea i was gonna make an only fans and i was gonna tell his friends about it and let them subscribe for free and it did work he sent me a big paragraph going off on 
me about it. I thought it was really funny, but anyways. So I had left one night with my friends, you know, they were just trying to take me out and make me feel a little bit better, just to try to make me feel better and get the recent breakup off my head. And I was living at home at the time. I had just turned 18. My parents were really strict and they didn't even know that I had a boyfriend. So while I'm out with my friends, I get a text message from my mom telling me to get home now. I'm asking her what's going on and she's telling me that I just need to get home because we need to talk. And so once I get home, I open the front door. I walk into the living room and my ass was spread open right on the TV screen. So this is gonna be part two of how my parents found my OnlyFans. So I get home from hanging out with my friends and I see my OnlyFans on the TV screen. My mom is acting like she just saw the Holy Ghost. My dad is shaking his head, just mad disappointed. For some reason, my little brother was sitting over there on the couch. And I'm like, what are y'all doing? What is this? Why would you put it on the TV? Our TV was a smart touch screen TV and you could connect your phone to the TV, but I didn't understand why it was on the TV screen with my little brother right there. My mom's yelling at me like, so is this what we are? Is this what we do? And she's telling me if I'm going to be acting grown that i'm gonna have to find a different place to stay because i'm not about to represent our family like this so i told her that it was just a quick way for me to make money and she told me that i was lying and then she proceeded to show me a text message that she got from my boyfriend telling her that i had let his friends subscribe for free and that i was going down the deep end and i need to be talked to i don't know if i said ex-boyfriend or not but it was my ex-boyfriend who had sent her that text so i told them that i would delete my only fans and this is what i said to my ex-boyfriend like for part three so this is going to be part three of how my parents found my only fans so it was my ex boyfriend who had told my parents about my OnlyFans. So I decided that I was going to message him. I basically went off on him and I told him, why the fuck would you show my parents my OnlyFans? Why did you feel the need to do that? You're just jealous, yada, yada, yada. And he told me that it's because he doesn't want me to represent myself that way. But I know it's more of the fact that his friends were subscribed to me and he wanted me to just take it down. And I told him that we weren't in a relationship anymore, so his opinion didn't matter. I removed him off everything and he still found ways to text me. He even eventually started to email me. And now he was telling me that he missed me and that he wanted another chance and i'm like dude no you almost got me kicked out from that point on my parents never helped me out with anything ever again i had to start paying everything by myself and throughout the relationship with my boyfriend he would basically do everything for me and so i decided to get back with him eventually he got his own apartment and so i moved out of my parents house and moved in with him and then me and him made an only fans together my parents found out about that too but there was nothing that 